Ho, 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 Merry Christmas. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, that's probably the last time, the first and last time you'll ever hear me do an impression of Santa. But talking of Santa, here we have a very festive Ice Age 2 review for you in the form of Santa's Express from Hondi. It's a lovely little Christmas set that's obviously come out just in time, so I thought I had to grab one and have a look at it for you. It's really small, <laughs> it has to be said. It's really quite small and basic, but hey, it's Santa's Express and it, look, it's got a wagon with presents in. What more could you possibly want? Okay, so the first thing to notice is that the layout is quite basic as well. There's no siding or anything. It's just a loop of track. It's an oval because of the two little straights there. It's not, it's not a circle. It is an oval, but obviously if you take those two out, you can make a perfect circle. And that's pretty good because it could go at the base of a Christmas tree. Yes, that's the whole idea, I think. Basically, they've been bringing out little Christmas wagons like this for a long time. And so the idea is that you start off with something like this, and then the next year, you buy just another Christmassy wagon. And then the next year, you buy another one, and then another one, and every year, you can add to it and make it a bigger and bigger Christmas train. Although at some point, this little 040 might struggle and you might have to solve it for like a Batman Class 40 or something. Because <laughs> that's nice and festive. Well, depends what you're into. But anyway, here we have the Hornby Santa's Express. So yes, you get a basic oval, oval of track. So third radius curves, which is nice. Two short straights, one of them being a power track. Your controller, which again is basic and a bit cheapo, but it does the job. Uh, your transformer. Robots in disguise. And then a locomotive and two wagons. Uh, if we just flip it over onto the back, you can see all the usual gubbins about um, the track map kits and accessory kits and stuff that allow you to build it up and make use of all these parts of the Hornby track mat. Because this is such a short oval, you'll notice that the track actually goes up across this muddy bit like that. It doesn't use these bends here, it uses that muddy bit, which I, th which I find quite interesting. And then of course there's lots of accessories down here again. They're very basic. But they, they, they're pretty cheap. I mean, they're, they're ideal for kids, really, because you, you don't have to worry about them getting snapped or broken or anything like that. Um, it's not something I'd recommend for a professional, like a serious railway modeler, but it's a bit of fun. Come on, it's a bit of fun. Um, some people forget to have that from time to time. That's all it is, it's just a bit of fun. So, let's open the box and have a look at what you get inside. Okay, so it's just a standard Hornby box, and you just pull that out, flip that up, bend these out of the way, and there we have it. That's all there is to it. Really basic, eh? So, let's have a quick look at all the boring stuff first. I'll be as quick as I can, I promise. I know that regular viewers of the channel have seen me do this a million times, but there's just a chance that you have never seen any of my other videos. Maybe you're brand new to the channel. Maybe you love the fancy new trailer I've just put up that took five weeks to make or whatever it was. <laughs> okay, uh, locomotives, operation and maintenance. So basically just your instructions for the little 040 locomotive that you get inside the set. And it's called an 040 because, just in case, no wheels at the front, four main driving wheels and no wheels at the back. That's it, it's as simple as that, really basic. Um, so yeah, just how to look after it, where to put drops of oil, not that you'll never ever really need to do that with such a, a basic little locomotive, but it's nice to include it and to show you how to care for it, so that's really good. And then, they've started putting these in a lot now, we have. these are the product range, uh, I can't call them leaflets, and they're not catalogues either, they're not even a poster are they? But whatever you want to call them, they basically just give you like a little snapshot of everything else that you can buy and everything else that they can do. And bear in mind that whilst the starter set is really basic and cheapo, um, Hornby do do some exquisite models as well. Look at that. See, Cop of the North. Wow. Fantastic. Um, apologies for the plane going over. They do like to do that when I'm doing review. So here we have the Collector Club. Um, I did join this ages and ages ago and then I left because the locos got a little bit cheapo. Um, it seems like they've done a nice one again, so I might possibly join it again. But I do need to join the Batman Club as well. It's not bad. You do get a few little, um, uh, again, I can't call them brochures or magazines. I guess they're newsletters, really. You do get a few newsletters through the course of the year. 
So it's not terrible, but I do think that there's a market for one for professional, more serious people like grown ups and stuff. I do think that. Uh, and then there's this. This is quite useful. This is a little owner's manual. Again, it just only gives you a snapshot. It's quite basic, but it just talks about making up baseboards. You know how you construct the frame out of two, two v one or whatever you want to do. Then you put your MDF or some dealer on the top. How to wire it up, how to make sure like you don't short circuit whilst doing a reverse loop and stuff like that. It's quite nice, it's just a little taster. It's just to whet your appetite, get you interested and get you going. And who knows where you might end up. Like me, um, spending thousands and thousands. Right, uh, the warranty registration card, don't really need that. For such a basic and little inexpensive set, I wouldn't worry about it. But for, some, for a set that's considerably more money, then yeah, fill it out, send it off just in case anything goes wrong. And finally, you get the trap mat. And here we go. I shall set that up for you in a moment and you'll see me put all the track on and everything. So, let's take a look at the actual, uh, you know, rolling stuff and, and track and stuff themselves. And down here is the controller. Let me just get it out. I'm still using this tissue paper. <laughs> but it does the job. So, be careful, try not pull on this too much otherwise that might snap and stuff but there we go that's your controller it does the job it's not too bad it's actually quite good at slow speed control but it is cheap it does feel quite flimsy so I think the idea is it gets you going it gets your train running on day one but in time they expect you to upgrade they expect you to buy a better controller really which is fine you know if they started putting dead expensive controllers in here Two things would happen. One, you'd have all the serious people moaning that it's not what they wanted. And two, the set would be so expensive, no one would buy them. So it's, you know, it's one of those. But yeah, it does the job, it gets you going. Um, and then of course, that's the British plug transformer for it, with the typical three pins. Although the earth pin isn't used, I see, in this particular instance. I mean, the voltage is so low, probably not needed. Right, so then we have the track. So these are really nice third radius curves, by the way. They are really quality curves. They're really nice track. Um, it's made in China. Most of their, tr well, I think all of their track is now. Uh, but it's it's good quality track. It's much better than the um, Austrian and British built track from the 80s. It has to be said. It needs very little cleaning, very little maintenance. And it, yeah, does, does a good job. Nice track. So you get eight of those, four at each end, obviously. And then here are your two little straights. So that's a really short one with no um, interesting features. And then this is the power track. So you just push those pins down like that, and then you clip in the power the power plug, and that's it. It's as simple as that. It's also compatible with DCC. Uh, and if you don't want to use this because you think it's unprofessional and you think it's unsightly, then you don't. You don't need to use it at all. You can use just a normal piece of track and you can solder the cables to the rails to the sides of them or to the underneath of them if you cut away a bit of the plastic. It's up to you. Do whatever you want to do. Right. So, oh, hang on. What's this? Uh, this is, um, oh, gosh, what did we, what did we, we agree to call them? Bill and Ben. I think Bill and Ben got seven votes, and the rest were about five or six. This is Bill and Ben. This is our driver and our fireman. There we go. Now, you can. the idea is that you can stick them into the cab of the locomotive. Um, if you want to paint them, you could paint them, but paint them before you stick them into the locomotive, obviously. And then here, you've got just a couple of vacuum tubes. And you just clip those out, cut them out, whatever, and they, they stick into the front of the buffer beam at the locomotive, at the front of the locomotive, and they stick into the buffer beam at the back of the locomotive. And in real life, this this bit would be quite loose, and you would just use that to connect into your coaches or your wagons, so that the vacuum braking system passes along the whole train. And that's it. That's all there is to it. It's <laughs> they've been including Bill and Ben and a little a little uh, pressed plastic um, set of these for gosh, how many years? Thirty. Maybe 40? I don't know. A long time. Okay, so you've been patient, you've been really good. I do appreciate it. Let's have a look at the locomotive itself. Here it is, Santa's Express. <laughs> That's quite cute. That's quite cute. I'll just put that to one side. Now, it is um, 
it is cheap, it has to be said, it's very lightweight. The plastic seems to be one piece of moulding, including the coal. Although, I don't know, maybe that is a separate piece. It's hard to tell. There's no spun buffers. There is some very, very basic cab detail there. <laughs> it's very basic. The, the uh, couplings are obviously the quite unrealistic, gigantic tension lock couplings, so they're, they're not realistic at all. But they're very good for tight radius curves, these are. And so, you know, running around a circle at the base of a Christmas tree, I mean, it's fine, isn't it? You're not going to be using this to pull some premium Batman GWR coaches, are you? Well, well you might, <laughs> but that's not the idea. It's perfect as a, a train set at the base of a Christmas tree, it really is. So it's not too bad. You've still got some, they've, they've still made an effort. You know, you've got uh, the copper top chimney there. You've got, um, well, the, the, the dome. You've got a couple of little whistles or safety valves. Well, both, I think. And then there's rivets on the smoke box around here. And again, no spring buffers. You see that hole there? Sorry for knocking the camera. That's where you put the vacuum tubing. Um, as you can see, it's just a simple 040. The motor is at the uh, at an angle, just inside there, onto the chassis, clipped onto the chassis. Um, a couple of little footsteps, again, a bit more riveting. The um, paint job's neat, it's nice. Uh, number 12, is that because it's the 12th month of the year, maybe? December? I don't know. But yeah, it's cute. It's cute, it's fun, it's nothing serious. Don't expect that. <laughs> it's just for fun. And to be honest, it could be much worse. It's really quite enjoyable. I can really see this going around the base of the Christmas tree and looking very festive. I mean, for a start, it's in a very festive red, isn't it? I think my mum has a whole box full of Christmas, car uh, Christmas crackers in exactly that colour. So, yes, it's very festive, very nice. And the red, the gold and the black are all very Christmassy colours. So that's beautiful. I'll just put that locomotive down and have a look at this wagon. Now, I love these wagons. And I have got quite a few of them, um, but I want even more. Look at this. Look at that. You can see it's obviously just a really basic uh, seven plant wagon or whatever it is. But they've created out of resin this block of presents to put into it like that. Okay? So the idea is that next year you buy another one, and then another one, and another one. And before you know it, you end up with a really big Christmas tree. And I think that's really cute. I think that's really cool. Um, it would be re even better if it had sound, if it had like a, if it played a Christmas jingle or if it played its whistle every now and again, that would be really, really good. But obviously you're talking cost, it would up the cost a bit more. Um, but if you'd like to see me try and fit sound to this, <laughs> let me know and I'll see what I can do because I think that's well worth a video, especially when the family come around. So that's your little wagon with with presents in. And then, interestingly, they've included a pretty bizarre one here. It's reindeer! <laughs> reindeer in transit. Again, very basic. The wheels are metal. Yes, they are. Yep, yeah, that's quite good. No, they're not. Yes, they are. Oh, hang on. There we go. Yeah, so if you, I do think they are plastic. Um, I, had a, I had a good look at them, and I think the wheels themselves are plastic, but the axles are metal. However, if you do want to replace them, it's pretty easy to do that. You just buy a bag of wheels in whatever design you want. It costs about a fiver, maybe, or something like that. So it's really easy to make them metal if you want, um, which I would recommend, because plastic wheels have a habit of picking up dirt and then transferring it around the layout, whereas metal ones don't tend to do that. So, yeah, <laughs> that's that. Um, although, oh yes, you can clearly see that those are metal wheels. Look at that. Definitely. And obviously they're metal on the locomotive, otherwise it wouldn't be able to pick up the electricity. So, there we go. I'm going to set up the track mat then, put the track out, and um, we'll get it running. Ta da! So here I am, I'm going to set up the track mat for you. I should be wearing a, a Santa outfit, shouldn't I really? That, that would be more festive. I am in Captain America socks, but I know that's not quite as good. Anyway! It'll have to do. So let's set the track mat up, track mat up first. Sorry, I'm a little bit hyper. Uh, coffee tends to do that to me. Okay. Okay, so here we go. Let's get this out. This is what you'll get in 
on your set as well. I might be tempting to take uh, a steam iron to it and flatten it all out, but that could be disastrous, especially on Christmas Day. So, don't recommend that. Okay, so now I need to put the track in, into position. And again, you'll notice that we're going to need to use this this muddy bit there. So I'll get that done for you now on slightly sped up footage. like that, and then as we plug this one in over here, like that, we need to bring the two closer together, and this is where it will make use of this muddy little bit. So this one just comes over and over and over and over, like that, plug it in, it can be quite fiddly to do this, so if you're doing this for a little one, I think they'll definitely appreciate it. Oh, gosh, yes, very tight fit that was. Okay, so there we go. That is the completed oval. And as you can see, it uses this bit here exactly like I said. Um, so it's clearly not designed to be long term, but it does the job. So the next thing to do is to plug the power in, basically. Right, okay, <laughs> everything's done. Everything's set up, everything's plugged in. Uh, we've got our nice completed oval loop. The only thing left to do is to put the locomotive on and get it running. So I shall just do that now. We'll put them on in the order they are on the box as well. So we'll put the locomotive first, like so. And then the wagon with the presents in. And then finally this wagon full of reindeer. Well, that, that, that seems a bit harsh to me to put the reindeer in there. I mean, there's, there's, <laughs> there's no ventilation at all. Hmm. <laughs> but there we go. Right, just hold the cable out of the way. It should work. Here we go. Yes. <laughs> it needs a little bit of a push. But there it goes. That's nice. That's running quite nicely. It's pretty smooth. It's not very fast, but I'm just beginning to think actually, maybe the locomotive has been... I mean, usually these old pocket rockets go like warp speed, but this is going quite reasonably, even with the controller there in that position. So that's quite unusual. In fact, that's as fast as I can get it to go. Hmm, very interesting. Because of course, you don't actually want it to go too fast around the base of a Christmas tree or something. It wouldn't be realistic. It would just fly off and crash. But this is, it's like it's been limited. It's like it actually can't go any faster. It's like they've done something to it. That's really quite good. I was not expecting that. But, are you, are you noticing what I'm noticing? I mean, it's all very good, isn't it? It's, it's doing the job, it's going around. But, I just can't help but think it doesn't look very festive. Ta-da! How about that? <laughs> That's a bit better, isn't it? Okay, admittedly, the Christmas tree could do with being bigger. But, it is the conservatory, and it is November. <laughs> so I refuse to get anything out even bigger. That will do. But you can see what I mean. It gives you the idea. 
So imagine this being much bigger, some fake snow on the ground, lots of presents all over the place. Yeah, I think that's really quite nice. I, I recommend it, it's fun, it's a nice set. It's great to have this going around the base of a Christmas tree, it really is. You just leave it running all day, um, it'll keep the kids entertained, or at least maybe uh, pick a fight with the cat, and that could be quite interesting to watch. So, <laughs> yeah, I def definitely, definitely recommend it, and I look forward to adding to it every single year. Well, thank you for watching, and wherever you are in the world, and whatever you celebrate, um, have a Merry Christmas, and a Happy New Year!